In today's Retro Tech Repair, we're going to be repairing this Bambino Race and Chase that I bought spares or repair on eBay. Alright, so here we have it, our Bambino Race and Chase, um, spares or repair on eBay. Um, you know, what an amazing thing, huh? This is just feels great. Oh, the battery compartments come off. This just feels great in your hand. It just looks so 1970s. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, it's, this is a big game. Uh, you know, it's fairly big and it feels really robust, like an old Bakelite radio or something, apart from its loose battery cover, of course. Um, cosmetic condition isn't the best. The case itself is fairly clean, but this big kind of, I don't know if it's a scratch. Um, it's a very deep if it is a scratch, perhaps a crack in the screen there, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, but apart from that, you know, it needs a polish up. It's got scuffs from normal use, but the battery compartment's clean and everything seems to be there. Let's take a look at the eBay listing for this one. So here is our eBay listing. Bambino Race and Chase Vintage Tabletop. It was bought as spares or repair, but I don't have the original listing, unfortunately. £10 for the item and £5.50 shipping, so a total of £15.50. Uh, so let's pop some batteries in it and see if it works. Uh, looks like it is C-cells, yep, C-cells. I thought for a moment it might be D's because there's actually a lot of space in this uh, battery compartment here. Looks like maybe it's had some glue or something on this. Yeah, it has a little piece there. Uh, it looks like at some point somebody's glued or something the um, battery tab there just to kind of give it a bit more uh, a bit more presence but that glue has long since gone uh, so that's why it's loose anyway um, so we've got the batteries in it uh, oh, and it's already powered on yeah. so this is completely dead nothing so one oh. And the battery compartment's fallen off again. So one thing that I've fallen foul of before, and I've done a couple of games like this now, is uh, that where a game's been... You know, these, these things are kind of heavy on batteries. And where a game's been run only on the power jack right, over a number of years, and that power jack has got kind of crusted up, and it's stopped the battery working. So before I go any further, I'm going to try and clean that up. I don't know what the polarity of this would be, so I don't want to run it off the batteries just yet. But I'm going to try and clean that up first. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some isopropanol alcohol, or isopropanol, I suppose, and I'm going to dip a connector in it. Oops. And I'm just going to work it in that, in that connector a few times. We'll just see if we bring this back to life. And all I'm doing is I'm dipping this connector in the isopropanol and I'm just working it back and forth there. Now this won't necessarily cure the problem, even if this is the cause, but you know, sometimes it's worth trying. Normally I, I take a screwdriver to these and I probably will just to see what's inside, but I thought it might be fun to do that first and just see. Oh, batteries are out. So we'll slip them back in. Still totally dead. So I think we are actually going to have to open this one up. Yeah, it looks like they are conventional Phillips screws. Seem a little loose. And so kind of feeling that I'm not the first person to go in here. They weren't pristine condition, the screws. Those two are a little deep. I'll have to get a longer screwdriver for those. Uh, but these don't feel tight at all. They definitely feel like Somebody has, has been in here before. I've opened a, quite a lot of these games up. Not the Bambino Race and Chase. the first time I've ever seen one, actually. But, um, yeah, I've opened a few of these up in the past. You just kind of get a used to what a, an untouched screw feels like. And this doesn't feel like one. I should probably get myself a little electric screwdriver to do some of these things with, huh? Okay. Wow. All right. So 
it looks like we have two circuit boards here, which is interesting. And our uh, jack here that we were fiddling with before. I think that, that looks like that just slides in there. So we'll take that out. There we are. And uh, I'm tempted to put some batteries in now and see if we're getting power. Looks like uh, should come in through either the blue or the yellow wire here from the positive and then the, uh, the negative just goes to this green here. So let's see if we can get the batteries back in. We'll see if we have power, first of all, going in to our board. It's a bit of a squeeze, but I think we can manage it. So with power, hopefully to the board now, I've got my multimeter here set to 20 volts. And uh, because that happens to be the range, the other range is two volts, and obviously we're looking for about six. So uh, are we looking? Yeah, we're looking for about six. So the negative is going to come in on the green wire here, and should land about here, and then the positive on the either the yellow or the blue. So let's try the blue. It's not there, and it's not there either. How interesting. So then that does tend to point to our jack here. Now I'll just check directly on the connector here. It's a bit of a fiddle. That's the uh, going in, so it should come out on either the blue or the yellow. No, nothing on the blue and nothing on the yellow. So really we do need to turn our attention now to this connector. Again, I don't know if I have any spares of these, uh, but let's turn our attention to it and see if we can get it cleaned up and working. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the uh, battery connectors here just very briefly because I've just found that it becomes a lot easier to work on these things when you're not hampered by having the plastics kind of floating around. Uh, for reference, I suppose the brown goes on, sorry, the orange goes on the left-hand side. I'll try and remember that when I come to reassemble it, though I probably won't. Uh, but the green is marked with a negative on one of these boards. That display feels a little loose there. If somebody's been in here and tried to repair this um, before, but that screw definitely feels a little bit loose. Uh, as I say, I think someone has opened this up. Yeah, so we'll just pop this to the side now and we'll turn off our soldering iron very quickly. And I'm going to take a closer look at this connector. Now, what you'll probably know is that these connectors contain a little switch. And the idea behind that switch is that obviously when you apply power into here, uh, with uh, assuming there was a power supply on the end of this. When you apply power into here, it pushes this little metal bar away and it breaks the connection to the battery. And the reason for that, of course, is that you don't want the power that's coming in through this connector charging the batteries because the batteries might not be rechargeable. You just want them running the game. And then when you remove this connector, it should go back to contacting and allowing the current to flow from the battery terminals, which are disconnected in this case, to the game. So we should be running on either batteries or the power supply, uh, but we shouldn't have the batteries trying to be charged by the power supply. And so that's the reason there's the switch. Now, my suspicion here is that either the switch contacts have got very dirty or they are kind of stuck in one orientation or another. So I'm not sure I have a spare one of these. Now I do have some spare VFD games. I bought a job lot of kind of uh, scrap boards, a few years ago, well, a few months ago, um, um, and I think I only had one of these connectors though, and I think I already stole that to use in a different repair, because as I say, this kind of happens quite a lot. So I'm going to have to try and repair this one. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm, I'm going to really immerse it in some IPA this time and give it a good jiggle around. And I'm going to work this connector a few more times. So having totally immersed the connector in IPA, I worked it back and forth with a barrel jack for a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, when I retested it with the meter, the situation was still the same, and I still didn't have continuity from the battery connector through to the board. Um, so what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and get something mechanically in there to clean that up a little bit. I'm not quite sure what, so let's see what I have to hand. Okay, so I found these tweezers. So I'm going to go in there and see if I can scrape some of what might be on there off. And just work that backwards and forwards a bit. See if I can clear off some of the 
oxidization or dirt that may have formed on that contact. As I do that, I'm trying to work both, both sides, so kind of clean that surface here, but also this surface here uh, in the switch. So yeah, I'm optimistic about that. Feels like I made some contact, so let's see. So now our orange wire, where previously there was no connectivity, now connects to the blue. Great. And when we insert a jack, then we should no longer have connectivity from the orange to the blue, because we won't want to be charging up our batteries if they were installed in the device, which is good. And then when we take it out, it should be back again. Let's move this into shot so you can see continuity and with the barrel jack in place. No continuity uh, or, or to the yellow. Now, now from here though, we should have something going to maybe not the blue, but the yellow. Yeah, okay, so when this is plugged in, it goes to the yellow, and then when the batteries are in, it goes to the blue. And why it's like that, I don't know. I'm assuming it goes through some kind of voltage regulator or something. So the question now is, do we have a working game? But before I go ahead and test that, I'm gonna remove some of the screws from here and show you what's on the other side of these printed circuit assemblies. Uh, this is the first time that I've seen inside one of these boards, we have one, two, three, four switches there, some electrolytic capacitors, a power transistor. I wonder if that's a D882, like some of the others we've seen in the games. Uh, no, that's not. That's a uh, C2334, a C2334, so not a D882, power transistor there. A uh, little transformer, TZ81. A piezo sounder, a collection of, um, maybe they're marked, maybe they're not, unmarked diodes, some resistors, and there's a smaller transistor here, that's a C1741, and some capacitors, which I'm not going to read all the values of, and it's these components here, I'm not quite sure what these are, base, collector, emitter, so they must be transistors, they're in a format I'm not familiar with, and then we have a VFD display, a few marks on that, probably from me uh, uh, Me just undoing the screws there. It looks like the little plastic marks, so we'll get rid of those. Display looks good. Uh, there is a getter compound, so this is the compound that's put in there to capture the off-gassing from the VFD display. If that has gone, this is a vacuum tube, and if this had been damaged and had gone to air, then those would be a grey colour, but they're not. They're nice and black. And then we have a processor here, Emix 501. 8021E05, and that's also marked 884319L. Uh, so uh, really that's about it. A few resistors, obviously the connectors between the board. Um, not quite sure what uh, this kind of array is here, marked River River, some kind of a resistor array, which is kind of interesting. Uh, piezo sounder, as I said, and then uh, a few uh, larger value electrolytics, uh, three electrolytics in there. I don't see any bulging on those, so I'm not going to try and do anything particularly uh, exciting with those, replace them or anything like that. Switches, uh, if the switches are working, then I probably won't lubricate them. I'm always worried if I clean them up with IPA or something that perhaps I uh, rub away or wash away some of the carbon or something that might be in there. So when we put this back together, if it is working, we'll test it. And if they're working fine, uh, then we'll leave those as they are. Uh, but that's largely it. Uh, we'll get everything cleaned up, then I'll go ahead and reassemble it, and uh, we'll take a look to see if it plays. So as I'm about to clean this up, I had noticed now that this crack starts here, it runs all the way down. It's, it's um, kind of invisible um, in places, but it runs all the way down there. It's a real shame, uh, unfortunately, that we have that full length crack in the display, but I don't think I'm even going to bother trying to polish this up. Sometimes I use a little bit of um, car polish or something to get some of these scratches out. I don't know if I'm going to go to the trouble with this because in actual fact that display crack is going to be so dominant anyway. The rest of it will benefit, I'm sure, from a good cleanup.
All right, so we're going to go after these little black marks and little scuffs that won't come off with just a little bit of uh, a tea cut, which is a um, old, old school kind of color restorer for car paints. Quite, quite abrasive uh, when you use it on soft plastics. So do be a little wary of it, uh, but I imagine this will fetch those scuff marks off pretty quickly. So if you're enjoying the video today, please leave a comment in the comments section below. Your feedback is genuinely very important to me and I read each and every comment and respond to as many as I possibly can. Your comments genuinely inspire me and keep me motivated to do this. And the time that you spend commenting is genuinely appreciated. And if you're really enjoying the video and would like to see more, please consider hitting subscribe. But for now, let's return to our repair. Okay, soldering iron's warmed up. And if I remember rightly, and hopefully I did, the orange goes to this side. And the green goes to this side. And we'll reassemble the game, taking care not to trap any of these wires as we reassemble it. So all that's left for us to do now really is to put some batteries in it and see how it plays. But in fact, I'm going to wait till the morning to do that. Uh, it's about half past 11 tonight and, uh, uh, you know, I want to spend a little bit of time playing with this and enjoying it and being able to demonstrate it to, to you. So here is our finished Bambino Race and Chase. Uh, of course, we don't know if it works yet, so we'll stick some batteries in the sea, but I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm quite happy the way it turned out. Can't do anything about this scratch, unfortunately. So let's put some batteries in it and see if it works. Now there are some instructions on the battery cover. Uh, basic operating instructions. Select the skill level, well that's going to be the easiest, whichever that is. Turn the power on, press this button, which is presumably start or something, and the obstacle cars will begin racing down from the top of the screen towards your police car. Use these keys to control the direction and movement of the police car to avoid colliding with the obstacle cars and to dodge the gangster's bullets. When you're 10 yards behind the gangsters, Move your police car into position directly behind them and press this button to make the arrest. It requires four C cell batteries. Well, that's promising. Let me dim the lights a little so you can uh, see what's going on. Okay, so the reset button, the capture button, the left and the right, we're on skill level one. Uh, so let's reset and go. It's like there are three lanes. Oh dear, so I hit one of the cars, so it's like I lost a life. Left and right both work. Reset works, because we just reset. And it appears after uh, overtaking a few of these cars, you kind of move up, which presumably is, oh, oh dear. Presumably you have to get close enough to the gangsters that you can use this capture button to capture them. Oh dear, I seem to have died. Okay, let's try again. So all in all, a nice little repair that. Actually, the game is quite enjoyable. There's lots of entertainment there. It's quite hard and challenging. Certainly in the third level, it's too fast for me to get anywhere with, and I still haven't managed to get close enough to capture the car that I'm pursuing. Um, so I think there's plenty of entertainment there to be had. Not a complicated gameplay, but there again, not a particularly complicated game. Really enjoyable, a nice easy repair. So there it is, our Bambino Race and Chase. I'm not sure how many of you would have had this as a kid. I certainly don't remember ever seeing one, but I've really enjoyed repairing it today and I hope that you've enjoyed the video too. Congratulations on making it all the way to the end and until next time, thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. Hi, that's what's inside here. That could be a problem. Just whip oh, the joystick works as it should. Great. Grandstand scramble, wonderful, looking forward to fixing that.